Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel. It's 10 videos in 10 minutes, giving me only one minute to debrief each video. So no messing about and let's get started. Let's That's an Illusion 62. Ooh, what? Bro. <laughs> nice with the stroke punch. Okay. Okay, here we have an Illusion 62 rotating very, very late off the runway. Um, yeah, it's a Russian aircraft. Uh, the runway to me looks totally fine, not so specifically short or whatever. I think that he, the pilot did it on purpose knowing that like an airplane spotter was at the end of the runway. I don't really think it's a, a clever idea to do that. I don't want to judge, but this, it's just my, my thought that why would anyone rotate so late having no stop margin whatsoever? It's, it's not the best, not the cleverest idea to do so. And great to see is though the wake turbulence at the end kicking up some of the cut grass uh, in which the plane spotter was standing in. Okay, Boeing 737. What's happening? Ah, okay. Come on, mate. Push <laughs> And now they can't get the door open. Oh my God, a classic. Okay, this video is a great example showing that the 737 does not have an assisted door when opening it and wanting to deploy the slide. Meaning, if you look at this video right here of an Airbus A320 door, when you arm the door and then you open it with the big lever, there is a pressurized cylinder within the door that automatically opens the door and then activates the slide or deploys the slide. And the 77, there is no assistance, meaning the flight attendant actually has to push open the door with some great force because the slide is hooked into the ground and that hook actually rips out the slide out of its casing, which is in the door. And here, the flight attendant seemed to have failed to push open the door with uh, the necessary force, meaning it got stuck at one point. And I think you cannot use that door anymore as an emergency exit in that case. Oh boy. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of smoke coming out of this one. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, but I kind of know the reason why. You can see it's already getting less and less. Okay, what happens here is that this engine has either been overhauled or they've attached a new engine to the wing and it's just being started up the first time after it's overhaul or after the attachment to the wing. Meaning that there's a lot of oil residue left over inside the engine uh, because obviously the mechanics have to make sure that everything is oiled and uh, lubricated properly. And I think in this case, um, some of this residue is just within the engine. So obviously when the engine is being started up, this sort of excess oil gets then burnt off and creates this incredible amount of smoke. You can more or less compare this like starting your car, which you haven't started in a year or so, that would probably create a similar amount of smoke just because of lubricants and stuff have collected sort of at the bottom of your uh, cylinders. So yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Why not? Okay, good. Absolutely love it. Yeah, just looking or judging by the plane, you can see at the bottom uh, that it's a, a crop duster, probably flying somewhere in a remote area. Maybe this pilot's battery died and uh, he couldn't start up his engine anymore meaning he just asked a local farmer to help him out and give him sort of a lawnmower start where you just pull the cord. What he does here is pull on the propeller, the propeller obviously attached to the crankshaft. I also want to say it's the safer way uh, starting the engine this way than rather uh, getting out of the plane and trying to crank it uh, by hand. So yeah, uh, very clever pilot, I would say. Made the most out of uh, using a tractor and his plane. <laughs> Fantastic job. Okay, here we have it. Holy cow, that is a big RC plane. Oh, it's a Zab Gripen. They're pretty rare, you can see them a lot. Right, nice little base leg. Yay! Oh, mate! <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Oh, wow, that's like $15,000 gone in one second 
or awful. Okay, let's look at the slow-mo of this video right here. Now, as you can see, as the plane is coming in, it looks as if it's going to do a roll, but at the same time, it has a bit of a yawing moment, meaning that the right-hand wing is sort of falling down. And I think, just by judging by this video in the slow-mo, that all of the weight of the plane actually went onto the vertical stabilizer, so onto the rudder at the back. And I think that sort of tore off the stabilizer. And then obviously once that happened, the rest of it sort of disintegrated. It's a model aircraft at the end of the day. Uh, it's probably not built in a way a normal Gripen would have been built. They don't know what load factors these planes could experience. Probably they experience far much more than actual planes do. So yeah, a huge shame, really, really bad. I really feel bad for the pilot. These, they put so much time and effort into these planes. And uh, if that happening at an air show like that is really embarrassing and, and really, really sad. So I hope he's got his motivation back to build the next plane. Maybe that was just a very, very unusual maneuver to fly and um, uh, killed his plane there. Okay, a classic water salute video. Nice. Oh, it's a fighter jet. Okay. What? <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> okay that's a classic video that goes into the section you only had one job <laughs> i assume that one of the guys of the fire brigade uh probably pressed the wrong button and uh, instead of spraying water over him he sprayed foam over him <laughs> during the water so that's a especially because the jet, the jet had to actually stop because he can't see anything anymore. I mean, that was so embarrassing, especially, I always say, the Dutch Ministry of Defence. <clears throat> well done, Holland. <laughs> that is hilarious. So they actually used the foam for the runways, meaning they cover the entire runway with foam to prevent planes that could have come in for an emergency landing that they have to, I don't know, touch down with their engines or whatever, that sparks are being reduced and that the rest of the plane doesn't catch on fire. But uh, yeah, this mate sort of pressed the wrong button for this water salute and this is just absolutely hilarious. Oh my God, I really feel for this jet fighter pilot. <laughs> Yeah, I actually have to admit, I've seen this. Absolutely embarrassing. I personally think it is super embarrassing in many ways. First of all, Charles de Gaulle, that just anyone can come with a ladder and climb over your fence and get into the airport uh, secured area. Are you kidding me? I mean, I know there's a lot of planes just sitting around doing nothing due to this whole pandemic and all, but still keep up your security. I mean, this cannot happen just like that. I was a Greenpeace member for 25 years until a couple of weeks ago. I personally think the whole message they were trying to get across is not really clever by vandalizing a beautiful 777, but uh, we are flying as little as possible right now due to the pandemic and you have to put out this message now. What change is that going to make? I, I really don't think that was so clever by Greenpeace. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed because they are messing with my kind of people, so pilots and passengers. So uh, that was not so good. Oy, oy, oy. That's a go around right there. Oof. Not good. Yeah, okay, in the replay. Uh, yeah, okay, 747-A pod strike. It is luckily a very rare occasion that this happens. Judging by the weather, it is pretty gusty and it is a crosswind. You can already see that on the approach that he was slightly unstabilized coming in, had to do a lot of corrections to probably maintain on localizer and glide slope. In the last couple of feet, the plane sort of gets this kick and it sort of tilts to the right hand side, hitting the outer engine first. And this is a lot of people misjudge that. They always think that the inner engine, so number two or number three, get hit first, but they actually don't. The, the risk factor is the outer engines on the 747. And the bank limit in this case is somewhere only between five and six degrees of roll. That is not a lot. That actually proves in this video right now, quite nicely. 
meaning Tolga go around and just uh, come in again. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that the engine was repairable. It doesn't seem like it's the biggest damage in the world. Yeah, it is uh, difficult to land a 747 in gusty winds and uh, you just have to be really, really careful. Okay, what do we have here? <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> sure, the captain has to take a picture of it. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, I have an idea. It looks very much like so that the door inside the cockpit is locked in a way that they can't get in. I will have to say this is probably a super, super rare occasion that the door to the cockpit is entirely locked that for whatever reason they can't open it. And now here is a very, very interesting fact that not a lot of people know. The 737 have an emergency opening latch which is below the first officer's window. Why it's only on the first officer's side, I do not know. Please comment below if you know why. But this actually allows you to open the window. It Then the window sort of falls into the cockpit and then you have to actually push it manually back to get access to the cockpit. So definitely look out the next time you see a 737 uh, if you can spot that tiny little latch with which you can then open the uh, window from the outside. <laughs> Okay, an Airbus by tap coming in. Oh, a little bit shaky. A bit gusty, probably. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> okay, good. Nice. Yes, perform the go around. Okay, there's a few things you can see right off the top here. The plane comes in, it's a little bit bumpy, it's a little bit shaky, gusty winds. No big deal really. But as the plane touches down, I can tell you that it did not switch into the ground mode. How do I know that? The ground spoilers did not deploy. And there's a couple of reasons why they didn't. First thing is that they landed on the right hand main gear first, then it went airborne again, and then they touched down on the left hand main gear. Now for the ground spoilers to deploy automatically, both main landing gears have to be on ground and the thrust levers need to be placed to idle. Only then the ground spoilers jump out automatically and then you can apply reverse thrust. And this was clearly not the case here. I want to say or assume that the automatic callouts already said retard for the thrust levers, but the pilot sort of may have felt this sort of bounce from one gear to the other and decided, okay, this is not safe. Let's perform a go around, which was in this case, probably the best cause of action. So well done, tap, tap, tap. Okay, we're not in ground mode yet. Let's perform a go around. <laughs> really good. <laughs> okay, that's it. 10 videos in 10 minutes. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please comment below the videos you would like me to debrief in the future, because I personally think you can learn a lot from these short little clips. That's it for today. Here's your checklist. Subscribe to my channel. Check activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, and perform a touch and go at my website, check where you can buy this beautiful plane and many other great gifts. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.